the at the time please keep your um, device muted so as to not uh, disrupt the presenter ladies and gentlemen welcome welcome to charisma university as webinar and this is a webinar hosted by the school of law at charisma university um, charisma university is your part way to success and we do hope that we would have been able on the completion of this webinar to entice you to begin your new uh, or your continued educational journey with us. Um, we are in for two hours or more of um, information of, of course, empowering you with the requisite knowledge that you will need to uh, begin that journey. I want to officially call this uh, webinar to a start, and I want to, um, first of all, introduce myself. I am Dexter Todd. Um, I am one of the faculty member at Charisma University, and I lecture in the field of law. Um, at present, I lectured, uh, I would be, um, of course, moderating uh, this entire webinar uh, today. And of course, I will be calling on the various presenters um, who will um, have a responsibility um, to introduce uh, him or herself. So you are going to hear a lot about um, the presenters today, and they're going to tell you their background and what is it that they bring to the table. Um, I know that you have, um, for those of you who are using Teams for the first time, I just want to indicate to you from the beginning that there is, if you look at the top of your screen, there is an icon which, which shows Q and A, um, which is the question and answer uh, um, part that you can use. You can just click on that Q and A, and of course, the, it will pop up and it will give you an opportunity to type a question that you would wish uh, that we address um, during the duration of the presentation. Of course, uh, before we come to a conclusion, we are going to allow you, give you an opportunity to ask questions and to get those questions addressed. All right. I hope that you are excited as I am today to have this webinar and to be able to interact uh, with uh, some of the most esteemed members of Charisma University. Um, you are in for a treat today. Um, just a little more on uh, for you in terms of the announcement. Again, we're asking all participants uh, to please keep your device muted uh, so that we can have a very uninterrupted um, session today. This, uh, of course, this session is recorded, uh, so we want to ensure that when it it is there for future persons to listen, um, they would not have any difficulty understanding any of the presenters um, presenting. Today, it is my uh, humble pleasure to introduce to you uh, as one of our first um, uh, speakers for today, um, our president of uh, Charisma University, Dr. William, and, and he is, I would, I would encourage you, a very humble, a very uh, well-spoken, a very uh, educator who is pas very passionate about education and has been leading Charisma University um, at the helm with distinction. It is my privilege to introduce him to you today uh, to give an opening remark before uh, we get more down to the presenters. Dr. William, we welcome you and we invite you to address us. Thank you so much and good day, everybody. Uh, my name is William Sloan. I'm in my fourth year as president of Charisma University, and I welcome you all here to this informational session. Uh, 
uh, in real life, I am also a lawyer. Uh, and uh, I practice in the U.S. states of Maryland and Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been a perpetual student. I went on to get a LLM in labor law and also uh, a, a doctor of civil law degree. And I've taught at Widener University School of Law um, here in Pennsylvania. My favorite courses to teach are uh, communication media law, which includes defamation, invasion of privacy, copyright, news gathering, and so forth, and also uh, state and local government, uh, administrative law, election law, uh, and uh, municipal corporations. So um, uh, teaching has been uh, uh, my career and my love, and uh, so here at Charisma University, uh, we have a mission, and that is to make accredited education accessible and affordable to people all over the world, as long as you speak English and you have a computer with an internet connection. When I went to law school a century ago, um, you had to go and sit in class full time for th three to four years. And... Uh, if you ask the question, who can go to law school? Well, it was a select group of people. It was people who could afford the time and money that it took. Uh, and, and so most people felt they were cut out, uh, even if they had the intellectual ability to succeed in law school, they just didn't have the finances. Um, they had to work. Nowadays, um, many opportunities are available online, and I commend Dr. Chukwuka for the way she has uh, put this law school together and created programs that anybody can uh, can enroll in if, if they have uh, uh, the basic ability and can learn um, from a distance, from anywhere. Uh, it, it takes work. That part hasn't changed. Uh, but a lot more people now have access uh, to this kind of education than, than ever did before. So uh, we're glad to have you here today. Uh, make note of your questions, and we'll certainly try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. President. What uh, what a way to start this webinar, and and what a way to uh, have such a, an, at such an early time of the morning, uh, the president of the university to be with us and to and to officially welcome us to this webinar. We thank you so much, uh, Mr. President. Our next presenter, I am sure you are uh, while you're listening to the presentation, you are going to absolutely uh, uh, appreciate um, this very. Um, humble educator from um, from Charisma University. Um, I would not stand in 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 her way of introducing herself to you, and of course giving you a background. Um, this is really the foundation of of this entire webinar, and a lot of what you will hear is really something that you want to pay attention to. Um, I want to take this opportunity of inviting uh, the Dean of the School of Law, <laughs> uh, Dr. Walker. I want to welcome you. I want to, I want to say that we are excited to, um, to not only hear you present, but to also uh, for us members of, of staff to be a part of what you are um, channeling and your vision. And so I welcome you to address us in this webinar today. Thank you so much, Dr. Doug. Thank you. I will start by introducing myself. My name is Dr. Mrs. Chinyere Ola Chukuka. I am the Dean of the School of Law at Charisma University and the Chair of the Ethical Committee. I have an SJD, which is a PhD in law, and a Master of Law from universities here in California, 
precisely Golden Gate University and um, with their law school. I also have an LLB and the BL from Nigeria, and I have a, a non-law degree as well. I am a legal practitioner with over 19 years of experience. I am also a researcher, author, course and degree program developer. As you can see the way I just put it together, this program. I also serve as chair a member of a PhD dissertation committee. So I welcome all of you to this program. The theme of today's webinar is exploring opportunities in the study of law. We will discuss the various, we will discuss the various opportunities available at Charisma University School of Law for students interested in studying law in graduate and postgraduate studies. This webinar will be an interactive session, so please feel free to ask your questions, any question you have during the question and answer section. I am going to start sharing the PowerPoint so that you can follow me while I present this paper. Okay. So, we we'll start with the general introduction of the School of Law. There are about six, six schools or faculties at Charisma University, which includes the School of Law. In the School of Law, we currently have four academic degree programs, undergraduate and postgraduate programs, namely Bachelor of Law, which is LLB, Master of Law, Master of Arts, MA in Legal Studies, and Doctor of Philosophy. In our midst today, we have some erudite law professors present today. We have Anthony Todd Dexter, who is our current MC, and Anthony Paul Abutu. They will introduce themselves, speak to you about our law program, and answer any questions you may have for them. We also, we are all, we also have uh, in our midst our one of our external examiners, Dr. Bethel Uzoma Ihuba. He's a legal practitioner and scholar. Currently a senior research fellow and acting head, Legal Research Division, National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, National Assembly, Abuja, Nigeria. He is one of our external supervisors in our SJD committee dissertations. That's our PhD programs. He is an author. He is the one that wrote this widely acclaimed book on legal research methodology titled Introduction to Legal Research Method and Legal Writing. It's a pleasure to have you now, Ms. Dr. Hyobwa. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Dr. Chukuka. Thank you so much. Now let's have a look at the overview of law programs at Charisma University. The Charisma LLB program is structured to meet the global LLB educational requirements and to prepare students to sit for the bar examination in any country of their choice. Our legal, our LLB degree program started last year on September 27th. 2021 and is a year old. I am proud to say that our pioneers that just finished their third semester final exam of their first year, they will commence the second year law school. Sorry. They will commence their second year law school journey on September 28, 2022. Now, what are the requirements to enter into this program? The requirements, admission requirements is the LLB program. First, you need, a, you need to complete application form and submit it to the admissions department. You need a proof of high school diploma certificate or GED required for all graduate degree seeking students. High school certificates or GED countries requirements. The university has set a minimum standard of high school certificates or GED requirements from each country. So if you want to know which one is right from your country, just go to the school website at charismaedu.eu and click on your country. You will see the requirement for entry into this program. Then if you're already a law student and you want to transfer, we need your official transcript from accredited colleges universities or other institutions where you have earned any credit. 
Transcripts are to be sent directly to the Charisma University. Unofficial copies of transcripts are accepted for provisional admission, provided that official transcripts are provided within eight weeks of acceptance. So if you want to join the program, you can join the program, even if your official transcript is not ready, but you must submit it within eight weeks of joining the program. We have the professional admission by the university's policy, just like I just said, Students, have, students that have not met all the admissions requirements are provisionally admitted and will be registered to classes, provided they provide copies of their own official transcripts before being conditionally admitted to the university. The maximum time allowed for students on provisional admission status to provide the official transcripts is eight weeks. Students under this provisional admission status that have failed to submit the official transcripts after the maximum allowable time will generally not be eligible to continue taking classes until after the admissions requirements are met. So if you decide to join the program today because we're starting an next academic section, next week, Wednesday, you can, and you'll be on that provisional, admi you'll be on that provisional um, admission. And you have eight weeks to submit your original transcript or GED or anything you require so that you can become a full member, student of the school. Our academic calendar. The LLB program academic calendar is different from the other program academic calendar in Charisma University, where we, we admit students only at the beginning of the academic calendar year. So once a year, once the semester is, the academic calendar is about to start, usually the first semester. So the next academic calendar will start this Wednesday, September 28th, and end on September 15, 2023. So if you're present, you still start a chance of joining the com this coming academic year. People will be wondering what the duration of the LLB program is and the number of courses required. The LLB program duration at Charisma University is three years. So for you to earn the LLB degree from Charisma University, you will complete 108 units of coursework within the three years of study. The program is offered in three semesters of 16 weeks per semester within the university's academic calendar year. And that academic calendar year is, contains three semesters. You are required to take 12 credits of coursework each semester. All courses are three credits. Within the third year of your study, you are required to take any, any three elective courses of your choice from the elective courses offered. The three elective courses will be taken as follows. One elective course in the second semester and two electives in the third semester. You will submit a well-written legal-based project at the end of the third semester in the same final year. For transfer students, the number of transfer credits acceptable from other universities in our, in our program is 90. So 90 credits is what we can transfer if you're already a law student from another school coming into LLB program. Now we have the courses we offer. I have it up here in first year. You can see I have um, use of English, the law of contract one, law of thoughts one, legal methods one. That's first semester. Second semester, you have introduction to sociology and they have the law courses, which is law of contract two, Law of Thoughts 2, Legal Methods 2. In third semester, you have to take introduction to computer science and then the law courses of Criminal Law 1, Constitutional Law 1, Law and Legal System 1. Then in your second year, you also have some general courses and then the law courses. You have introduction to philosophy and they have the Criminal Law 2, Constitutional Law 2, Law and Legal System 2. In the second semester, you have introduction to psychology and you have to take legal research and writing, equity one, evidence one. And then third semester, you take the introduction to political science. Then you have to take equity two, evidence two, logic and clear thoughts one. In the third year, students must choose one or two elective courses for the second and third semester respectively. So for the first semester, you also be taking Law courses, the law of corporate finance and financial markets, logic and clear thoughts two, law of advocacy one, administrative law one. In second semester, you have to take law of advocacy two, administrative law two, jurisprudence and legal thoughts one, and then you choose one of your elective courses. And then in the third semester, you have to take the LLB 435 jurisprudence and legal thoughts two, 
and an elective and two elective courses. And at the end of this whole course, you're required to write a project. We call it legal based project. So it's a kind of research you're going to write for us and tell us everything you've learned so far. In the law school. Now, the, what are the electives we have? We have so many to choose from. We have family law, we have public international law, we have European Union law, we have international human rights law, intellectual property, employment law, company law, international environmental law, alternative dispute resolution, comparative law, commercial law, industrial and labor law, terrorism and counterterrorism. You are free to choose any of these three electives, one in your second semester of third year, and then two in your third semester of your third year. People be wondering how do we deliver our loss program? It's obvious we know that usually that most law schools, most law schools are always like in person, but here in Charisma University, we also have it live. So all our courses are three credits each, and this is synchronously taught for three hours and 20 minutes per week. Because it's three credit units, we divide it into twice a week. So assuming you want to take criminal law or law of conduct, any of them is three credit units. So you meet twice a week for one hour, 40 minutes. Ten minutes being a break period in between the class, just for relaxation. So, and then we use both Teams app and Sycamore Learning Management Systems. The coursework includes, but is not limited to case studies, oral presentations, assignments, midterm exam examinations, moot, legal research and writings, quizzes and final examinations. Exam and quizzes are conducted and monitored by the school proctor. And we also want to ascertain the result of the students' work. This is very important to the university. So we don't play with plagiarism in the university. So the students' work are always checked for plagiarism in their grammarly account, which you will get once you join the school. What about that, the ethics of the legal ethics of the legal profession? Of course, it's a legal profession. So we are so conscious about the ethics. So and we highly encourage people, our students in this program, to always observe that. So students attend classes only on the legal dress code, which is white, black, and navy blue. And attendance is essential, and no eating or drinking in class, except probably water. The next program we have is Master of Law, which is LLM program. Now let's talk about the admission into the LLM program. Of course, the first is I have to fill. You have to fill the admission, the application form, and then you need your official transcript from accredited, college, accredited colleges, universities, or other institutions where you have earned any credit. Transcripts are to be sent directly to Charisma University. Unofficial copies of transcripts are accepted for professional admissions, provided that official transcripts are provided within eight weeks. We also have. Um, professional admission, just like LLB program. So even if you're, if you have an, an unofficial transcript, you can start, but then you have eight weeks to provide your original transcript. And this program is only for people that have LLB already. If they have LLB or JD, some country call LLB program JD, like US, they call it JD. So if you already have an LLB or a JD too, and you want to get your LLM, then this program is for you. You can join us. The academic calendar for LLM program is six sessions of eight weeks per session on a, of an academic year. So it's usually like six weeks, six um, academic sections, and each, each of the six academic sessions has eight weeks. So the following academic session is fall two and is beginning on September 27th. That's next week, Tuesday. You can still join. And on, in the LLM program, we have our three areas of specializations which students must choose from. We have the estate plan and management, conflict resolution, and homeland security. You'll be wondering what's the duration of this LLM program and the number of courses required. The LLM program is a one-year program. Yes, one year. The required number of credits for the LLM program is 24. All courses are valued at three credits, except for the master thesis, which is six credits. 
each, spe each specialization must include the following courses, LLM Legal Research and Writing and GRES 690 Master Thesis. These are the two compulsory courses you must take alongside with the whichever area of specialization you want to take. Now, what are the courses offered under each specialization? All the courses are valued at three credits, except master's thesis, which is valued at six credits. The LLM program research, right, and writing, and the GRES 690 master thesis are the compulsory courses which you must take, as I said before. And then you have to select one of the program specialties you want to do. So you can select, if you want to do estate plan and management, you have to do probate and real estate law, contracts, business law, civil litigations, corporate corporation law. If you want to study, um, if you want to specialize on homeland security, you can choose contemporary issues in terrorism, homeland security and terrorism in the United States, preparedness in response to terrorism, homeland security and personal freedom, intervene and investigation. If you want to take, if you want to specialize in conflict resolution, they have to take theory in conflict resolution, conflict resolution in the workplace, conflict resolution and communication, conflict negotiation and mediation, alternative dispute resolution. Then if you're trying to transfer your credit from another school to the school, the number of credits we take in the university is nine credits unit for, LL, for master programs. Now, how do we deliver the lectures in the LLM program? We use the Sycamore Learning Management app, and these students always have weekly assignments, discussions that are always do on Sundays. They have um, weekly announcements and their research paper. We use Team app for individual meetings and oral presentations of research papers and master thesis. Students are required to submit their plagiarism report from their grammarly account for each assignment submitted, because we really don't joke with that. Observe, then how do we observe the legal profession in LLM program? We just encourage them to dress legally, especially when they come for the meetings and oral presentations. They're already practicing lawyers anyway. We also have Master of Arts in Legal Studies. Well, this one is um, a program where people can join. If you already have, um, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're already a professional in another field, you can actually join this program just to acquire legal knowledge to function effectively in your place of work. This program does not prepare students for legal practice. Instead, it broadens students' academic and professional development by providing a solid legal doctrine and concepts foundation. What are the requirements? That's admission requirements. You have to complete an admission form, official transcript from accredited colleges, universities, or other institutions where you have earned any credit. Transcripts are to be sent directly to Garisma University. Unofficial copies of transcripts are accepted for professional admissions, provided that the official transcripts are provided within eight weeks of acceptance. We also have professional admission. If you, if you don't have your um, official transcript ready, you can join and then provide it later. So the academic calendar for this program is the same thing as the one for the LLM. It starts, it's run six sections of eight weeks in an academic section. And the next academic session is also starting on fall, which is beginning on September, fall to, which is beginning on September 27, 2022, next week, Tuesday. What is the duration of Master of Arts in Legal Studies program and number of courses of required? The program duration is one year and students must complete 36 credits. All courses are valued at 36 credits except the master thesis, which is valued at six credits. What are the courses offered? You can see all the courses here. Legal writing, introduction to legal system, administrative law, intellectual property, legal environment, introduction to the criminal justice system, introduction to policing, tort law, the court's role in the criminal justice, criminal investigation practices and procedures, master thesis. The number of transfer credits Acceptable from other universities for master of program is still the same nine, nine units, nine credits. How do we deliver lectures? 
for MS students. It's the same way we deliver for master students. So we do it through the Sycamore Learning Management app. This is also have weekly assignments, discussions that are due on Sundays and weekly announcements. We also use the teams for individual meetings and oral presentations of master thesis, just like what we're having right now in this team. Students are required to submit their plagiarism report from their grammar accounts, each assignment submitted. And then we have our another program, which is the Doctor of Philosophy, the PhD in Law. PhD in Law, this is a terminal degree law program, and it is designed to prepare candidates for careers as legal scholars, researchers, and teachers. So if you already have your LLM, and you still want to further your education in legal career, probably you want to start being a scholar or researcher like most of us are, or teachers, then you are welcome to join this program. What is the admission requirement into the PhD program? A completed application form for admission, a completed letter of intent stating which doctorate specialization you plan to take and why, Official transcripts from accredited colleges, universities, or other institutions where you have earned any credit. Transcripts are to be sent directly to Charisma University. Unofficial copies of transcripts are accepted for provisional admissions, provided that official transcripts are provided within eight weeks of acceptance. Again, we have this provisional admission. So, if you, in accordance with the university's policy, students that have not met all the admissions requirements, are provisionally admitted and will be registered to classes, provided they provide copies of their unofficial transcripts before being conditionally admitted to the university. The maximum time allowed for students on provisional admission status to provide their official transcript is eight weeks. And students under this provisional admission who fail to submit the official transcript after the maximum allowable time will generally not be eligible to register classes until all the admissions requirements have been met. What is the academic calendar for PhD program? It's the same as the LLM and MA program, which is six sections of six of eight weeks per session of an academic year. And the next academic session is fall to beginning of September 27, 2022. What is the duration of the program and number of courses required? For you to end a PhD program from Charisma University, the duration is a minimum of three years and the maximum of five years. The total credits required for a PhD in law is 52. This includes the 15 credits in the dissertation. And then you must, out of the 52 credits, you must take a three courses, which then must complete. And these courses are valued at 13 credits. They are doctoral dissertation seminar one, which is credit units, doctoral dissertation seminar two, another six credits, and law 6-4, which is qualifying oral examination. So this qualifying oral examination is always taken after you have finished your coursework. That's at the end of your first year of doing your coursework in the school, you have to prepare the, your, the summary of the dissertation, the paper you intend to write and submit. And once you do that, we form a committee for you and then you come and do your oral presentation. So apart from this dissertation, uh, doctoral dissertation one and two and qualifying oral examination, the other courses are valued at four credits. Now let's take a look at the overview of the program. How do we run this PhD program? A lot of things are involved in it. First of all, we have three areas of specialization that students will choose from. Students will complete units of coursework during their, will complete 37 units of coursework during their first year at the university. The two required courses for the area of specialization and any other four courses from the elective under the areas of specialization. At the end of it, a dissertation committee is formed for the students at the end of the coursework. The dissertation committee includes two external supervisors and the Dean School of Law, just like what we have Dr. Ihua Badu for us as a senior examiner. He is currently sitting as one in one, in one of our current um, students' PhD dissertation committee. The students will advance to candidacy upon completing the qualifying oral examination. The candidates will continue to write their dissertation valued at 15 credits. 
and will be required to attend and present a paper in at least one colloquium before the final oral examination. The candidate is expected to finish the dissertation and be ready for the final oral examination on or before the end of four years after advancement to candidacy. The candidate is required to maintain active registration with the university at every academic session and work closely with the executive committee members approved by the faculty. The program also includes opportunities for independent directors study and research under the guidance of a law faculty adversary. Now, what are the areas of socialization offered in the Charisma University program? PhD. Students must choose from international law, specialization, comparative legal studies, or terrorism and counterterrorism. What are the courses offered under each specialization? The courses listed each area of specialization are valued at four credits each. So under international law specialization, students must do these two core courses, which is international law and international criminal law, and their eight credit units. Then they will choose four courses from the electives, which will be 16 credits. They can either choose from comparative law, international human rights law, international humanitarian law, terrorism and counterterrorism, environmental law, intellectual property, introduction to US legal system, arbitration, or can even do directed study. And then under comparative law study specialization, students must take comparative law and international law, and then choose any four courses from international human rights, international humanitarian law, terrorism and counterterrorism, national criminal law, environmental law, intellectual property, introduction to US legal system, immigration law, arbitration, or can even do directed study. And then under terrorism and counterterrorism specialization, the students must take terrorism and counterterrorism for credits, international criminal law for credits, and then choose any four courses from international law, comparative law, international human rights, international humanitarian law, immigration law, arbitration law, or can even do directed study. And if you're transferring, if you're a transferring student from another university and wants to transfer your credits to a university for a PhD program, the number of accepted credits is 12 credits. Now, what is the method of delivery of the lectures in, in the Charisma University School of Law for PhD students? It's still the same learning management, the Sycamore Learning Management app. During the one year coursework, the students have weekly assignments, discussions due on Sundays, weekly announcements, and their research paper. At the end of each session, the students will have an oral presentation of the research paper they wrote in that course. We use Sim Teams app for individual meetings and oral presentations of research papers and dissertation. Also, we require plagiarism reports from, for each assignment submitted by a PhD student. In terms of our legal, observing the ethics of the legal profession, we encourage them as well to observe the code of dress code of um, legal profession, especially when they're doing their oral presentations and examinations. Now, generally, what are the availability of law lecturers in Charisma University? All law professors are always available to students. We have our office hours for live meetings via team. We are just so approachable that even if you don't meet us in our office, you can just email us or request an appointment outside the office hours. So in law faculty, we are always available for students anytime, any day. I encourage you to join us. And this is all about the programs we have in the four programs we have in Charisma University School of Law. I thank you all for listening. I know that you have, been, you have so many questions for us. We will answer all your questions during the question and answer session. Attorney Paul and Attorney Todd will present and elucidate on the quality of lectures delivered at Charisma University Law School and life after obtaining law degrees. Dr. Ramjit and Ms. Elizabeth will speak on the resources available to students and the admission process, respectively. 
You will also hear from some of our undergraduate and postgraduate students. The Charisma University Center will speak on the university's accreditation, license, scholarships available to students. Please relax and enjoy this presentation. I know you have so many questions, but we will answer all of them. Thank you for listening to me again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Chioku. Um, of course, Dean of the School of Law. What an informative session that was um, going through that presentation. I'm sure that all participants that you were indeed um, edified. And of course, you are a lot more equipped now with the type of knowledge that you need. I want to I want to just before we get more into uh, questions and go back to some of uh, what uh, our dean of the School of Law uh, did mention. I want to give um, a special opportunity to our executive vice president of Students Affair, uh, Dr. Diana Murray um, Ramjit. I want to uh, ask you to please. Uh, welcome, Dr. Ramjit, as she, of course, uh, present uh, to us um, uh, her presentation surrounding um, certain resources available at Charisma University. I welcome you, Dr. Ramjit. Thank you, Todd, and thank you, um, Dr. Chukwuka, for inviting me to this um, webinar. It's a pleasure to be here. I am in between sessions. We are having our new student orientation for fall uh, 2, 2022 at this point. So I'm going to share with you um, some quick information on the Office of Student Affairs um, so that I can run back into my other meeting. But my name is Dana Marie Ramjit, and as you would have heard, I am the Vice President of Student Affairs here at Charisma University. And I've served this lovely university for the past 10 years. Um, our department includes a team of academic advisors and support specialists that work to ensure that our students' needs are met. Um, we maintain a mission, and that mission is very simple. It's to promote student success in their academic, career, and personal lives, and we aim to produce well-rounded individuals through an inclusive and holistic learning environment. So we support our students in three main ways. Um, through advising, through our resources, and through our service to you. And so um, one of those would involve successfully transitioning. And that's whether you're transitioning from um, a high school to a tertiary institution, from a face-to-face -to, -face to an online arrangement. We use a strengths-based and counseling approach uh, when we work with you. So we listen to our students' concerns. We identify their strengths and their challenges, and we help them work towards positive solutions. So we like to take a proactive approach to our student concerns here at Charisma. Uh, some of our support services are concerns with grades, um, time management, study and learning strategies, um, lifestyle concerns, in some cases health issues. And we also collaborate with many other resources across our university and we connect our students to them if we think it may be beneficial or helpful to their needs. Uh, I also want to talk about the student newsletter, which is a publication that comes out of the Office of Student Affairs that's focused on highlighting student achievements with the aim of keeping students active and engaged in our learning community as well as our wider society. Um, and so we encourage students to tell us what they're doing. Um, if you're doing something important in your community, um, in your profession, let us know so that you can be a source of motivation to others and you can help us to sustain our community. Uh, we also have a support center that is available to our students that follow the ticket system. And students are able to log into that platform for all questions or concerns or, or, or issues so that they can be addressed in order of priority. Uh, we do have a director of student affairs, student resources, sorry. And her name is Dr. Ashley Hussein. She's not here today, but she's the one that takes care of all our technical stuff. And so um, if you do decide to join us here at Charisma University, you will meet her and she will assist you with all technical related issues. Um, I also want to talk about our library because I am very proud to say that we are we are offering students some of the best, uh, what we can say, state-of-the-art in online resources. 
we use the Learn platform. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Learn, although they are quite popular, it is L-I-R-N, which is the Library and Information Resources Network. Um, and it's really just a consortium of educational institutions that have come together to provide students with millions of peer-reviewed full text journal magazine newspaper articles ebooks podcasts um, from databases like sengage um, ebsco proquest um, very vast library um, that you know touches on subjects from the very general down to the specific like ed education business medicine law um, so we are very proud to offer that service um, it's among some of the best that universities provide for online education today. Uh, and so we always encourage students to rely on our library first. There is a wealth of information there. We also have a, a writing center that we have um, featured Grammarly Premium um, for our writing instruction services to our students. Each Charisma student receives a premium account. It means that we pay for that account. So if you, if you know of Grammarly, there are two versions. There's a basic, which is free, and there is a paid. So we pay for the premium account for each student, which is a very valuable resource um, that provides you with over 400 types of checks. It's a grammatical um, checker. It works for um, editing services, plagiarism, um, you name it. Uh, and so it's a and it also provides vocabulary enhancement. I use it daily, um, so I know that our students can benefit and will benefit because it provides a broad range of writing instruction and editing services. And we have that service because we are committed to developing students as writers first because we believe that writing is a quintessential skill that you need to develop as a practitioner scholar. And so we are proud to present that service to our students. We also have a career center that I'm happy to present to you that's fairly new, uh, but it supports our students and alumni uh, in developing workplace skills so that they can succeed as professionals. And so we have um, on that platform, we have cutting edge global career resources for students and services as well. Um, and we also promote pro applied learning in that resource. So whether our students need help with a CV, uh, a cover letter, um, career paths, et cetera, um, if they go to our Office of Student Affairs website, you click on Career Center, you'd see that resource is there to support our learners in career management. Um, I want to close. Um, Charisma University um, Division of Student Affairs is thrilled to invite you to learn more about Charisma. Uh, I know you will love being a member of the Charisma family at Charisma. Uh, you will take uh, many, first, the first of many steps on a remarkable journey ahead of you. So I want to assure you um, that you have a strong group of cheerleaders, of supporters, of mentors, of advisors here um, to help you make the most of your time. We want you to excel academically. We want you to stretch yourself and try something new. We want you to engage in the community, and we want you to choose to make decisions that will elevate you and your future and serve the campus and community. So this is an amazing time of your life. I hope that you will kickstart this experience with Charisma University. So thank you for attending today, and I hope you will consider joining this amazing community. Take care, and my very best wishes. Thank you. I turn so over much. to Todd. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for those uh, words of encouragement. And of course, taking us through and exploring Charisma uh, University in terms of what is available for students. I want to, without any delay, I want to uh, introduce to you and have uh, you meet and uh, one of the uh, lecturers in the area of law at Charisma University. I want to welcome uh, Mr. Paul Abutu. Um, I want to welcome Mr. Paul uh, Abutu. You are invited to speak. Um, participants, please do welcome um, one of our lecturers at the law at Charisma University. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Talk uh, Dexter, for the, uh, your work so far. I'd like to thank the Dean of Law School, Dr. Chinyure Chukuka, 
Uh, sorry for my background. Um, there's a power outage uh, here in the state of California, particularly in the Bay Area where I live. So my background is dark and I apologize because you can't see me, my face as it should be. Um, I would like to also want to um, I thank uh, Dr. William Slot, uh, the president of Charisma University, and also our Pro Chancellor, Dr. Peter Chris Okbala. Uh, thank you for your presence. And I also want to acknowledge my students, some of them are here, and every other person that is present, and some other colleagues here at Charisma University. So I've been asked uh, to speak um, uh, on the quality of lectures delivered here at Charisma University Law School. Um, also talk about uh, lecture time duration and methodology and other things as time goes on. So I'll try and see how I can be brief with uh, my presentation. Um, so at Charisma University um, Law School, we present our students with opportunities um, for meaningful engagement uh, with the subject materials and also with the lecturers. That's part of the things we do in terms of quality delivery on our lectures. We also prepare the lecture um, uh, appropriately by making materials concise and understandable. Another thing that we do here at Charisma is that we illustrate the practical application of the theory presented through moot practice sessions and direct engagement of our students. So we have moot practice sessions where we would put, it's like a courtroom experience where a student will have a first-hand experience of what, it feel, of what it takes to present before a judge because most of our lecturers, all of us, have been people that have practiced law in other jurisdictions and, um, and we are still in it. So we, we get to see uh, what we have, what is to come and what they will expect. Our lecturers also teach by showing enthusiasm and, and share their unique litigation experiences in classroom. Another thing that we do is that our teaching stimulate our students um, with critical thinking and we help to harness their ability to analyze legal problems through the use of IRAC. IRAC here we're talking about issues, rule, um, application and conclusion and we try to lay emphasis that your analysis is the most important thing that you do while you're answering a problem solving question. Um, going further, talking about lecture time duration and methodology. So lecture holds twice a week and it lasts for an hour 40 minutes. Uh, Dr. Chukuka mentioned that earlier. And that thing is that our LLB, LLB program, she stated earlier is for three years of three semesters each, and um, each semester is for 16 weeks with a week break in between. Uh, next, I will talk about the teaching methodology uh, that we embark on in our LLB students. Uh, and one of, the, um, one of the things that we do is that we teach through uh, the online platform. She already mentioned that um, using the, the Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams that she has mentioned, our lectures are interactive, and we often have in-class discussions and we review decided cases by ensuring student participation. So student participation is very key in what we do. We ensure that each student comes to class and ahead of time they have to go through their readings and they come to class and we engage in discussion. So our class is what is highly interactive and participatory. Our lectures are also recorded for students to review to ensure mastery of the subject matter so that if you don't understand anything, you can always go back and look at the recordings. That will also help to enhance our students' um, um, understanding. Years ago when I studied law, about 15 years ago when I was done with law school, I didn't have the privilege of recording recorded classes. Uh, like Dr. William Slot said, we have to go to class day in and day out from Mondays through Fridays, even sometimes on the weekends, to hear our professors speak. But Charisma University, has, um, along other universities, have made it easier that you can have you can have a law degree in the comfort of your bedroom or your living room. Uh, so going ahead, also talking about highlight on student assessment. So we assess and evaluate our LLB students uh, through quizzes, assignments, moot practice sessions, um, midterms and final examination. So um, traditionally, people want to embark on final examination to pass an exam. No, uh, that alone will not make you pass. You have to 
to ensure that you meet up with other requirements. Your assignments have to be good and uh, take home assignments. Uh, your quizzes have to be top notch. You have to ensure that you hit it all around for you to come to a passing grade or an excellent grade that can take you to the next class. All of our quizzes, midterms, and final exams are what? They are proctored to ensure compliance with the university examination protocol. Students who violate protocols or cheat, who have not had any so far, would face a disciplinary committee and ethics committee that is chaired by the dean of law school. Uh, attendance and class participation are graded and it forms part of our students' assessment. Next, I will talk about highlight of student assessment uh, for the LLB. So the LLB program is not lecture based. Our LLB program is not lecture based and we assess our students um, through uh, weekly assignments, discussions, 10 papers, which are run through a plagiarism report. So going forward, uh, upon admission, students are given access to a Grammarly account, they did mention that earlier, and are required to run the assignment through Grammarly to check for plagiarism. Students are required to submit the plagiarism report from Grammarly alongside the assignment into the Sycamore management platform accordingly. That you will do so that everything you present, it can be run through, and then we'll see if there's anything that, uh, that connotes or suggests there's a plagiarism there. I also know that Charisma University has zero tolerance for plagiarism, and um, I mentioned that anyone who is found will face a disciplinary committee. All materials are, are submitted through the online systems, and students will be taught how to use the platform upon admission. LLM is for is for what six uh, semesters of three uh, of eight weeks each, and a, a total credit of uh, twenty four is required in any specialty. Next, I'll talk about a highlight of, of our grading policy. How do we grade our students? What do we do? So the grading system of um, our Charisma University laws, uh, follows a 4.0 grade, uh, point grade. Uh, Charisma University and the law school uses the, uh, the letter grade, uh, namely A, uh, uh, A minus, B plus, and all that, and so forth. Those are the grading systems that we use. Furthermore, our grades are configured into the following categories, namely attendance, which is like 10 10%, uh, 10 uh, class participation, 15%, assignment is another uh, uh, 15%, uh, quiz is another 15%, our midterm session um, uh, exams are 20%, and final exam is only 25%. That's why I made emphasis that final exams will not alone no matter how excellent you perform, will not uh, will not make you pass. So all, it's it's all uh, done conjunctively. Everything has to come together. And next, I'll talk about the highlight of students' weekly updates. So here in Charisma, we we make a weekly update. Uh, the course lecturer keeps in touch with students on a weekly basis to give uh, updates about the course and any other announcements as they come. Uh, for our LLM students, the weekly update includes reminders, for example, to adhere to writing guidelines, such as blue book citations, um, uh, footnoting, font size, and all that and all that. So weekly, I would have to give that uh, when I take my LLM class, um, my students, I have to remind them that, and my colleagues also do that, so that we can ensure that they comply to every other requirement. Students can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with the lecturer uh, for any academic assistance or guidance as the need arises. So, uh, part of the so that's uh, part of the things that we do uh, as a lecturer. I do we ensure that we meet up with all the requirements that our students will need and ensure that. We don't leave any stone unturned. So if a student is not satisfied with the point of law or because of want of time, they can only schedule a one-on-one -on -one session. I will tell them this is the strength. This is where you are getting it right. When you use of IRAC, you are hitting it uh, on the rules. You're, you're, you're spotting the issues are correct, but the application of the rules may not be uh, may not be on point. Or basically, your analysis, you're you're arguing one-sided. You need to argue on both sides to be able to balance to have a standard essay, so that our students will be. Able Able to uh, meet up with uh, challenges and also be able to compete effectively with students from other universities and also be able to take the bar exams in their respective countries. Uh, uh, thank you very much for all that. I, I feel at the beginning to make a, um, 
an introduction of myself properly. So as he said, my name is Paul Abutu. I am what I am. Um, I'm a licensed attorney in the state of um, the Nigeria, called to the bar um, in many years ago, and I have done a lot of litigation work. I've also gone to. Um, uh, other universities to attain uh, postgraduate degrees, including Golden Gate University, and also I was, uh, I was also uh, I had a non-legal uh, degree at the Nigerian Defense Academy uh, in Nigeria, which is uh, a, a equivalent of the West Point you have in the US or some other place uh, or Sandos in England. Uh, those are kind of part, form part of my background, and I also carry on research work. I've also uh, been engaged in litigation work uh, here in the state of California. I've done family law uh, with the office of Chris Emily in San Francisco and the Bay Area, and um, also in the city of San Jose. I've done some uh, work with, uh, with taxation, wills and trusts, and so on. So thank you very much for listening, and I do hope uh, that you have gained a lot this morning. I am gaining a lot from my pre colleagues and other presenters, and I do hope you enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Paul Abutu. Um, uh, we would have liked to see you, though. I'm sure the participants would have <laughs> liked to see your face. I believe your camera was off. Um, I, I know that you did uh, give an explanation, um, but I hope that before we, we end that we have that opportunity to see you. Uh, participants, it is now just a few minutes for me to um, for me to share with you, um, of course, my role and responsibilities and encouraging uh, prospective students uh, to join this uh, great university and the programs that we offer. My name is Dexter Todd. I am one of the lecturers at the Charisma University. I lecture in the field of um, or uh, the courses um, legal uh, systems. I lecture uh, constitutional law. I also am the facilitator on, on the, the master's program, um, uh, guiding students in the area of conflict resolution and communication and theory in conflict resolution. I come from, with a background of knowledge in, in, in a vast um, set of areas. I have um, a bachelor's degree uh, from the University of Guyana in international relations. I have a bachelor's degree um, for, um, in law from the University of Guyana. I have a legal certificate from the U Wooding Law School in Trinidad. I have uh, a LLM, which is a master's of law from Charisma University in conflict resolution. I have a master's of law in international business law from Cumbria University in London. I have a master's of science uh, uh, degree um, in fraud and risk management from the University of Stalford in London. Of course, I have a certificate and I am a certified arbitrator, international arbitrator and mediator, uh, certified through the University of the West Indies. I am an attorney at law who practices called to the bar in Guyana and Belize. Um, so I practice in all areas um, of, of, of law, um, and I am a legal consultant for many companies around the Caribbean. I was just a few days ago appointed as the legal director of the African Caribbean Chambers. Um, and of course, that brings together a number of companies, businesses um, in relation to investment um, opportunities, and prospects in the Caribbean, so I am their legal advisor. Now, having having I said all of that about this uh, very humble man, Dexter Todd, I want to tell you that the area of law is an exciting field. It is a field that gives you an opportunity or will give you an opportunity to explore various areas having completed your studies. Of course, you would have heard uh, from our dean of the law school um, that our PhD as well as our LLM program gives you an advantage, not only uh, to be legal scholars, uh, to be researchers or lecturers of law. Let's say that you are interested in completing your bachelor's of law degree, then and you may just want to consider uh, becoming uh, an attorney at law and being called to the bar. I will tell you in short time 
what the process uh, will be. Of course, let's say if you are not interested in being an advocate, so you, you're not interested in going to court, then you may want to consider being a corporate secretary. There is room for many corporate secretaries around the, 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 the Caribbean, of course, and around the world, because me, this office requires you to uh, be very compliant with a lot of the company's law and the company's act of that country. So sometimes it is always better to have someone with a legal background in that area. You may want to consider, of course, if you want to practice, you may want to consider qualifying yourself um, uh, to, to be an attorney or to be called to the bar. Of course, there are a wage of advancements that you can, that you can seek. Of course, on being an attorney at law in the Caribbean, after three years of being called to the bar, and of course, once you uh, maintain a very high ethical standard in your profession, you can make an application to be uh, a judicial officer. So you can be called as a magistrate. Or after 10 years of sitting at the bar, of course, again, maintaining very high ethical standards, you can make an application to sit on the bench as a judge. Most of the countries of the Caribbean, and of course, in, in the Commonwealth countries, afford you the opportunity to go up uh, after 10 years, um, between 10 to 15 years, to make an application to sit on the appeals court. So there is absolutely no um, way in which you might say, there is no room for me. There is always great opportunities and a room for you. Now, what you are going to learn, and I will take it first at the LLB. At the LLB degree, at the universe, at the at Charisma University, we are teaching you substantive law. So having obtained, when you obtain your, your degree in law from Charisma University, you will have to go on further to one of the law schools which is authorized under the, the Council of Legal Education um, in the Caribbean. Now, in the Caribbean, um, let's say that you are coming from a Caribbean country and a uh, Commonwealth country in the Caribbean, and you want to uh, have, of course, an opportunity to be called to the bar, you will have to go to one of the selected zone schools in the, um, in the Caribbean. Now, there are three law schools. Uh, that is that are covered under the um, under the Council of Legal Education. That is the Ewooding Law School in Trinidad. Um, then you have the Norman Manley Law School in Jamaica, and then you have the Eugene uh, Law School, Eugene Depot Law School, which is of course in the Bahamas. Now our school, Charisma University is registered, our university is registered and is operating out of Turks and Caicos. And those students, of course, coming through that university is going to be zoned at the Eugene Depot Law School. Now, you would want to ask, what is the requirement? I will say this to you, that the requirement under the Council of Legal Education is that once you have studied in a Commonwealth country, um, then you would have been um, um, qualified for so for uh, an application. You can make an application. Of course, students coming from outside universities, which are um, not in the grouping of which there are special arrangements for application. Charisma is not yet one of those universities. So we fall in the second category. The second category is that you will have to sit an exam um, for entry into one of the law schools. Don't worry, we have, of course, practitioners or lecturers who are experienced in the area of uh, practicing in the Caribbean. So, of course, there is going to be a special session to be able to coach you and for that exam and to prepare you for that exam. If you are interested, let's say you're coming from uh, Nigeria, the Republic of Nigeria, and you're interested in calling, being called to the bar, I have great news for you. You are studying 
um, in a commonwealth, uh, a university which teaches uh, the common uh, the common common law. So it's a we considered a common law jurisdiction. All right. So you will be able to make an application to your law school there, having received your degree from uh, Charisma University to be admitted into the law school. So the great news for you is that there is no bar in receiving the degree from Charisma University and going on to apply to the law schools. Of course, being admitted to the bar, there are various um, of course, rules which are covered under the Legal Practitioners Act in various uh, Commonwealth jurisdictions. Of course, uh, and many of them, it's going to vary. So it depends on which uh, jurisdiction you have an interest in, in being called to the bar in, then you will just want to, um, of course, look at the, uh, the Legal Practitioners Act and see what guides uh, the procedure of you being admitted there. Um, I can say, for example, in Guyana, South America, we do not have a special time for admissions. Once you have attained your legal certificate or your license from one of the schools covered under the, league, uh, the, the Council of Legal Education, then you can make uh, your application by way of petition to a judge and you can be admitted at any time um, here. Now, for example, in Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados, those countries um, would do their admissions, um, of course, in batches. So sometimes you have to see what month is the required month or the accepted month for that group to be admitted. And that is how it's done. OK, it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Of course, countries try to maintain their their own um, uh, procedures so that you can also be confirmed to the laws in the various jurisdiction. Now, I want to, as I said, there are great opportunities awaiting you if you want to move on. If you have um, a, a law degree and you want to move on to your, your master's or your PhD, I can tell you there is a wide range of opportunities awaiting you out there. I can say as a as, as great testimony, um, of course, the LLM or the law or the Masters of Law allows you to be a lot more analytical. Of course, you are a lot more, of course, exposed to, to, to deeper um, um, uh, philosophies and undertakings of law or reasonings of law, which of course lifts the level. It pushes you on, onto another bar. And of course, I was taught, um, and I remember this very, very clearly when I was in law school, that um, my, my ethics professor said, listen, at the, at your, in your country, you are going to meet many lawyers. You're all at the same level. And so they were like, I want you to picture it. They're like, oh, no, I'm not calling lawyers chicken, all right? But she said, I want you to picture it. It's like chickens moving on a field. And as you elevate yourself and take the opportunity to distinguish yourself, you move higher. And you'll see that, of course, that the recognition goes with you. You want to be an eagle. You want to be soaring, you want to be flying. So one of the best ways to come out of the group and the, or the norm is to lift your educational level. And of course, so I encourage you to join those of you who are already um, in possession of your LLB to come on board and to join the master's class or even the PhD class. Of course, going forward, you're going to hear from some of our present and past students who are going to share their testimonies with you. So I want to thank you for listening to me um, in Derry, that short presentation governing um, admissions to the bar and opportunities having received your LLB, LLM, and PhD. I want to move this forward, this discussion forward. You have listened keenly to presenters talking about the law program. 
And I'm sure you have more questions in relation. You're excited, you're motivated, and you are ready to hear, how can I be a part? And so I want to take this opportunity to invite the registrar of admissions, um, Ms. Elizabeth um, Manizzi, to present to us and to, of course, encourage us of how transparent and easy the process is of being admitted as a student in or at Charisma University. Ms. Elizabeth, I welcome you and I invite you now to share with us. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may find yourself. My name is Elizabeth Martinez. I am student and faculty assistant at the Charisma University. I have been working with Charisma for about two years, and it has been an experience to say the most. I have seen the school excel, and we are welcoming more and more students by the session. So today I'm going to be speaking about the admissions process. I am heavily involved in the admissions process, but I'm not exactly the person who admits the students. I am typically the person that speaks to the students about how to make tuition payments, as well as if they need to submit their transcript, as well as um, their course um, information. I also help teachers and, you know, and help teachers to um, reach their students when the students are not being participating in their classes, as well as when students are having difficulty part, um, reaching their teachers. So today I would like to speak about the admissions process. The admissions process is quite easy. All you have to do, as mentioned before in the presentation made by Ms. Chokuka, Dr. Chokuka, you just have to visit our website, which is charisma.edu.eu, and we have a really big tab which says apply now. That will lead you into a window in which you will have to fill out, you know, all, all necessary fields, which will require your name and your number, and most importantly, what course you want to take. It is important that you fill out the part where it says what course you want to take in order to avoid any confusion and be sure of what you're doing because sometimes students um, say they choose this one and um, it could be a misclick and they end up doing something else. We also require you in our admissions application to submit your transcripts. I know some students do not have access to their official ones, but they are they have their unofficial ones, which work just as fine for the time being. The reasons we need your transcript, of course, is in order to ensure that you have studied before, so you have a foundation of education in which we can be able to work on to excel you into something else. So we need to approve what school you went to and if it is accredited, of course, because we accept students from accredited schools. So also, after you have submitted your application along with your transcripts, um, this will be sent into our Sycamore system in which our admission specialist um, will be able to review your transcripts, of course, and check your CVs, everything, and be able to determine if you qualify for our course. You will then receive an email with an admissions letter that says exactly when the course starts and what have you been enrolled for. It also includes the tuition um, amount that you must pay and how much it is in total. Now, there is a case now that we have introduced um, as of, I believe, last year in which students sometimes do not um, give us their transcripts right away, but they show interest in any and they still um, apply without the transcripts. We give students a conditional letter and in this conditional letter, it includes things that we offer if they decide to go forward with it, because a conditional letter is just proof that we acknowledge that you have applied. So here is what we offer. And if you want to continue and complete your. Your um, application, we would like you to know this is what we offer. So we add um, the cost, the total cost it will be for the course, as well as um, the requirements such as the transcripts that we will need in order to ver um, verify your qualification for this course. So the admissions letter, it takes about um, a day or two or three sometimes to process. It all depends on how fast our team can get through the transcripts as well as if your transcripts are um, 
true if they're legitimate because there are times when people do deliver us false transcripts. So we have to take our time and verify everything through websites, through previous universities, as well as other schools that you might have gone through. So on to our tuition. So for since we're dealing with bachelors of law, um, is uh, it's a privilege for me to say that we have a very affordable um, tuition um, tuition payments for our bachelors of law and for our law degree program on a whole. So our bachelor of law program is through a three year program. So that is 36 months and um, we go by a month to month um, payment with tuition. So you pay every month, but you also have the option if you are able to pay the entire thing wholly if you would like, or if you want to do a few months at a time, we can accept that. We just have to keep track of it and, you know, always look and be able to backtrack everything. But we do a month to month basis because people usually get paid month to month and we usually ship off our um, invoices at the first of the month. We give you two weeks in order to submit payments. So by the 15, your tuition must be paid. If not, we um, we have to um, send you a warning um, and tell you that this has to be paid in order for you to continue your class. So for our Bachelor of Law, it is 300 per month, 300 US dollars per month to pay um, to pay every month. If you would like to pay the entire thing on a whole, in total, a three-year, a three-year to monthly payment of three hundred dollars is ten thousand eight hundred dollars. That is U.S. dollars. Okay. So our Master of Law, our Master of Law, and our Master of Arts in Legal Studies, which are both twelve months each, you. Ha um, you pay a monthly tuition of three hundred and twenty-five. US dollars and that will come to a grand total of $3,900 um, in total. Again, you choose the method in which you would like to pay, but it, it is granted that you can do monthly installments. This is how we usually do it. But students also have the option to pay months at a time or pay the entire tuition off. Then we have our Doctor of Law, and our Doctor of Law, as said in the previous um, slides, um, it can be completed in three years, minimum of three years, or a maximum of five years. So we're looking at a $350 US dollar payment every month for a Doctor of Law. And this price range is ranging for three years, so three years would be 12 thousand six hundred and then that can go up to twenty one thousand dollars on a whole so these are some things to consider because you have the options now our payment methods we only have two for the moment we do payment methods to paypal um students have the access to go into paypal in their in their sycamore portal because students also have an accounting option in their sycamore portal so you can pay through PayPal. I also, um, every session, I send out a um, tuition notice in which I include the PayPal account um, name or email, so you can send the payment there, or you can do a bank transfer. We are um, located in the Turks and Caicos Islands, which is in the Caribbean, so we have a Turks and Caicos Islands bank account. And if you want to do um, bank transfer, we do not use um, I think it's IBAN code or IBAN number, we use a SWIFT code. So you will have to see if your bank can process that. If not, try the PayPal, or sometimes you can find another, another way, or some people sometimes they have a person who has a bank account that can work with an, a SWIFT code. So yes, um, we encourage you, I encourage you to, give it a try because you have a team here who is very hands on. They are very responsive with their students. Um, I often will be popping by in their classes. I work as their proctor sometimes and it is a very nice time and I get to learn a little bits and pieces about, you know, what they teach about. Um, thank you for the, um, the time and may you guys have a great day. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Ms. Martinez. Uh, thank you so much. That was such um, great information for us. Um, I want to give some of the um, the current students um, an opportunity for uh, for you to hear from them. Um, um, you heard you heard our dean said that uh, our students have completed their first year. Wow, their first year of hard work at the uh, university. And um, let's let's just hear from them their own uh, perspective. Uh, of of the program so far, um, I want to give um, an opportunity to Dr. Uh, Kian Ivan to um, to um, to say something, and then I want to, in the same order, I see John Marie's here, and I see Kamika is here. Yes, so in that same order, I want to give you an opportunity to to say something uh, to our listening uh, audience. Dr. K and I invite you to begin. Thank you, Dr. Todd, and welcome to the School of Law's webinar for 2022. My name is Kay Ann Irving, and I am a current student in the Bachelor of Law program, the LLB. My experience has been extremely fruitful since I'm pleased to have completed the first year and entering the second year of the Bachelor of Law program. The Bachelor of Law program is extremely meticulous, systematic, and content dense, with amiable, astute, and practicing attorneys at law who serve as our esteemed professors. It's a challenging yet intellectually stimulating mode of preparing students to be either an effective member of the legal profession, whether as an attorney, a member of judiciary, or in business or education. Delivery is done by live lectures on camera, known as the synchronous learning, on our two platforms, the Sycamore and Teams platforms. We follow a very astute dress code with the colors black, blue, and white. We don't wear other colors as we are upper military. We, we have end of term exams. We have moot sessions, moot practice sessions, exams, quizzes, take home assignments, and we are also graded on participation and attendance. So we see we don't only depend on um, an assignment or an end of term, as Dr. Chapuka said. Dr. Chapuka said also to, to pass our tenure at law school. Um, we have covered areas such as contract law, tort, criminal law, legal methods, constitutional law. And um, we have covered all the requirements for the first, second, and third semesters. My advice to students contemplating entering the LLB or the LLM or the PhD is just start. You have amiable, illustrious professional tutors to guide you along. You will be successful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Irving. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, John Mary, can you can you unmute? And I welcome you to to uh, share with us. Okay, greetings, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is John Mary Oko from Nigeria. I'm in Enugu State currently. I am a learner as well. I would like to share on my experience at Charisma University. And also, I want to talk about the facilitators. OK, to begin, the experience here in the university is so, so wonderful. I've always seen it as a privilege and opportunity to achieve my dreams. And then, the experience here has made me to learn a lot, so much, 
when I started this program, at a point, I was so much biased that I said to myself, I can't make it. But the presence and the dedication of the lecturers, the professors, gave me so much courage. At this point, I want to appreciate my professors. Anyway, Dr. K has said it all. The professors, the facilitators, they are so much wonderful, dedicated. I mean, you have access to them at any time. The mood of uh, the facilitation is so wonderful that the recording can make you to go back to maybe have a rehearsal or listen to the class, the record, listen to the class again. Then a lot of reading, research work, legal principles, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, the facilitators are wonderful, so wonderful, and I want to use this opportunity to appreciate them. I want to encourage everyone, anyone who wish to come on board. Charisma University is the best place to be. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John Mary. Thank you so much. Kabika, Cameron, you've, you're addressing us all the way from Jamaica. Thank you so much for being here, and I welcome you to address us today. We're, we're not hearing you, Ms. Cameron. Um, check your volume. We're still not hearing you. Did we lose? I believe. I believe we lost uh, Ms. Cameron there. I'm sure she is going to be. Um, I'm sure she's going to be back. Um, I want to. I am. I am still, even though I am one of the facilitators um, with the LLB students. As I said, I am also. I am also. Um, a PhD candidate at the Charisma University, and I want to I want to testify of my own experience uh, at this university. Um, my first my first year, of course, of doing all the courses required for my my PhD, and I am focusing um, in the area of terrorism and counterterrorism. Um, all the uh, of courses were of the highest teachings. Um, the philosophy and going very deep um, in the areas of, of, of the law has been a journey that I can tell you I have had no regrets. I am, I am currently um, doing um, my, my, uh, my research um, paper and I can tell you more as I read and more um, that I'm writing, I am finding um, more and more that I have come to the right place. I am at the right university. So, of course, for those of you who are considering doing your PhD in law, there is no other university you want to go to but Charisma University. All right, uh, Kamika, you're back. Um, yes. Thank you, you're back and we can hear you now. Just put on your Sorry. video for us, and of course, you are welcome to address us. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Todd. Greetings to everyone, especially to my esteemed colleagues um, from our cohort. I am based in Montego Bay, Jamaica, and I am very privileged to say that I am a part of the LLB program for the Bachelors of Law with Charisma University. And yes, we have successfully completed 
our first year. So I want to thank all the lecturers, the proctor, the dean. Thank you very much. It has been an exuberating experience. Um, for those who are joining, undoubtedly, this is the place to be. Why have I said so? Well, I was formerly from a different university and charisma has embraced me from where I was coming from. And they have worked very closely with myself, with my other colleagues, and we have made it thus far and we're open just to start the new, the second, the second year, the new semester, and we are a very synchronized team. As John Mary Oko had mentioned, if you're struggling, we will assist you. Not just myself or Dr. Irving, but all of us are a team. It involves a lot of reading and it does take time, but it is well worth it because at the end of the day, this is for us to progress into the profession of law. And as Professor Todd had mentioned before, there are so much opportunities that this has to offer us. So welcome and thank you very much for making Charisma University your choice. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much, Ms. Cameron, for that, that or those words of encouragement. Uh, thank you so much, John Marie, and of course, Dr. Kian. Thank you so much. I want to I want to give us this very special opportunity. Um, now, entire today you have been having this webinar a lot of of, of special um, um, presentations and and by very special people. Um, but even more, we are even more humbled again um, to to have uh, such a person uh, with us today to give remarks. I want you to uh, help me welcome. Um, the, the Chancellor of the of, of Charisma University, Dr. Peter, Peter Chris uh, Apollo, as he, um, of course, gives some general remarks and, of course, um, guide us in relation to um, the, um, of course, the life, um, the depth of the university um, that we will call home. And I sure that you will call home very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone, wherever you are. It is just um, such an honor to be here, actually. And uh, looking here, I see there are uh, a few students, those that we could call our new students. So uh, before I begin to say anything about Charisma University, I want to warmly welcome you and to congratulate you for taking it so important today to be here with us, especially with the LLB program, the Bachelor of Laws, that only admits only in four. So you are basically, uh, you know, um, you know, starting at the right time because if you would miss to enroll. At this time, you will have to wait for next year four. So congratulations, and uh, I commend you for coming in today. So again, I'm going to speak more on the Charisma University accreditations and licenses, Charisma University rankings, Charisma University scholarship opportunities for you as our students or incoming students. You have heard from our current students and looking at them, you will see that they all come from different backgrounds, right? But they have something in common. They have high credentials, high academic credentials and the demonstrated insight into legal profession, okay? And uh, these are the kind of students that Charisma University will always wanna have and you will be one of them. So why Charisma University? Look around in the Caribbean region, 
and compare any school you will see there with Karisma University. One thing for sure will speak for itself. Karisma University is the most accredited university in the Caribbean region. We are mostly accredited compared also to the other world. The university has both local recognition and international recognition. Right? And we are, you know, we don't stop there. We continue. We continue to acquire additional accreditation and recognition for the school. In the Tops and Caicos Islands, the university is ranked as the first university in the nation. In the Caribbean region, we have been listed as the first best 10 university in the Caribbean region twice. Actually, it's going to come up in the um, in next edition because I think COVID was not able to do, uh, disrupted the ranking in 2020, sorry, in 2021. All right, so let's talk about our license in the Tocs and Caicos Islands. Tocs and Caicos Islands is an island in the North American, and this is under the British Overseas Territory. However, the Tox and Caicos Islands operates on its own. All the laws in the Tox and Caicos Islands are independent from the UK. Uh, Charisma, Tox and Caicos Islands uh, do have their own requirement, their own quality assurance that every university or higher institution must meet in order to be licensed or to maintain the license. Charisma University has been operating since 2011. And the university is proud to continue to maintain that quality assurance the government requires us to have. We have two licenses from the Ministry of Education, Box and Gagos, license to offer all our programs on ground, license to also offer all our programs online. The university is not under condition by the Ministry of Education. We are not even under probation. We are always in compliance with the laws and regulations as it relates to education offering in the Docks and Caicos Islands. Now, you might ask, what makes this university what it is today? When you look at our curriculum, you will see that our curriculum is of quality, right? We don't compromise for inferior. Now look at our faculty. We do have our great faculty members today that have introduced themselves to you. And these are a few that you will see at Charisma University. Now, when you look at their backgrounds, it kind of, it gives you a little bit idea about the kind of quality faculty members we have at Charisma University. So the faculty that will teach you are experienced business experience faculty, those that have worked in the field and are telling you not only on the academic side, but how to manage your profession when you graduate. They have tested the field and they know how to handle the field and they know what to tell you. When you listen to our lectures here by this, our great faculty, it will not only make you good students, but it will make you good practitioners. And these are the kind of quality faculty you see at Kabuzma University. Let's look at the other side. You have heard from our student affairs with the kind of resources we offer to our students. As a matter of fact, the accreditations we have, they rank Charisma top on the student resources we offer to you, our students. When you compare the amount of resources we offer to our students, you will agree with us that we invest so much on this just to make sure that students have all the necessary tools to succeed in their careers. So that is why the university remains licensed in the Tox and Caicos Islands. The same thing goes on with the accreditation that we have. We are fully accredited 
institutional wise and programmatic wise. So the university you are listening today is a full-fledged accredited recognized university. We are listed in the International University um, Handbook and this handbook is maintained by the World Higher Education Database, the WHED, uh, which is obviously managed by the UNESCO. This list is only for recognized institutions around the world. Charisma University is listed in this database. And the university also, all the programs we offer is listed, right? on um, this website, World Higher Education Database. So when you look at our ranking, like I said earlier, we are ranked first in North and Caicos Islands. We are ranked first then in the Caribbean region. We also have world ranking. And world ranking is obviously over 30 or 40,000 accredited universities around the world. Charisma University is ranked top 200 university on the um, reducing inequality in education. Okay? So we are here to serve our students, not to serve our faculty, unfortunately, but we are here for all our students. You are listening to us today. We are here to help you. And that is why the School of Law decided to offer this webinar for you. So I'm very grateful that the School of Law thought about you today because there has been a lot of questions from students about the LLB program or LLM program or legal studies or the PhD law. So this is your chance to get all your questions answered. Now, at Charisma University, which you already know, we are a non-profit institution. So we are not into taking money from you. We are into giving you the knowledge that you need. You have heard from Elizabeth, from our registrar's admissions department. You have heard from her the tuition that this school charges, right? Now, when you do justice to yourself and compare that tuition with other tuition you know in the Caribbean region or in the European region or wherever you are and compare it to yourself, it tells you something, right? This Charisma University is highly affordable. And Dr. Sloan, who is the president of the university mentioned that, that this is our mission to provide low cost education. We are trying to make this education accessible and affordable to all students around the world. So we are not driven by money. We are driven by you to help you, to equip you with the knowledge that you need. So here at Charisma University, we what you heard from Elizabeth is obviously the scholarship that we offer to all students. And that scholarship stays. It doesn't go anywhere. When you become our students, this scholarship is automatically okay, uh, given to you. You don't apply for all these things. So this low tuition is locked for you throughout the duration of your program at Charisma University, right? So what I am trying to tell you today is you have the privilege to hear from all of us and from the Dean's School of Law, Dr. Chubuka, she said that the next semester begins on September 27th. And you heard me also say to you today that the Bachelor of Laws only admits one time in a year, and that is September. You have to do yourself this good by enrolling 
today, you have a chance to do that. If for any reason you are not ready to enroll this time, you will have to wait for next year, 12 months. You have also heard from our, our, our pioneer students, they just completed their first year. If they had waited, right, and say, okay, let me start next year, let me start next two years, they wouldn't have at least moved closer to their graduation. Our LLB program is only three year program here. And these our pioneer students have now two years to move to the next stage, which is the law school for their bar. This is the time for you. You also heard from our, one of our professors in School of Law, Professor Dexter. He said it clearly. There is no restriction. There is nothing that will uh, prevent you from moving further to law school. You heard it from him. So the only thing you owe to yourself today is to sign up and enroll and begin your program. If you are here with high school, you are eligible for admissions. There are, we don't have any admission test for you to take. All that we need is your basic high school qualifications, right? Now, if you're here with your bachelor's degree in law and you're licensed to practice law in your country or anywhere, right? You are eligible to enroll in any of our masters in our master of law program or even master of legal studies. Now, if you have bachelor's degree in a non-law uh, field, then you can consider our master of uh, art in legal studies, right? What of if you are here with the master's degree? Have you thought about the PhD in law? This is an opportunity for you. You study at the comfort of your home. You earn the accredited and powerful degree that will take you places. At Charisma University, you have heard it from the Dean School of Law, we teach quality. We don't compromise for quality. We provide the all the tools and all the resources. You are assigned to an academic advisor from the one that will walk you through. Connecting with your professors will be so easy for you to do at Charisma University. Assessing all the resources we have will be so much easy for you. When we enroll you, uh, you know, in Charisma, we call you one of us. You are part of our family. So as a parent will take care of his child or her child, that is the same way we will treat you, okay? So everything at Charisma University is designed for you and for the success of our students. Again, uh, I'm grateful that the School of Law under the uh, leadership of uh, Dr. Chukuka and then her professors here, you guys have heard their, um, their voices. Uh, they took their time today to be with us and to host this um, webinar. And we are basically beneficiaries of this webinar. We are very thankful to them. And also, again, congratulations to our pioneer students. I wasn't easy. I remembered when they started this program last year. It was it was difficult. You know, uh, you know, they we are really um, trying to balance their work with this school and a lot of stuff. And uh, by the way, uh, Dr. Kaya did not tell you guys more about herself. I know she could be a little bit mad if I say this, but you guys notice that Dr. Kaya. Uh, how would I describe this? She was or uh, she's outgoing registrar of Charisma University. So she is resigning from the registrar just for the law program at Charisma. You see how committed, how, how she took this LLB program, that she had to trade this program uh, with her, uh, you know, with her work. Okay. And this is to tell you that when she graduates, uh, she could be more, you know, happy with, uh, she wants to be called um, an attorney, and she likes that name. She wants to be in that field, practicing, 
and I know uh, most of you here would also want to be in that very um, position. Law profession is one of the most respected professions. And the moment you come in here at Charisma, the very first day of your lecture, you will know that you are in the most respected profession. So welcome on board, guys, and seize this opportunity to enroll as quickly as you can. Start this program on September 27th. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Chancellor of Charisma University, Dr. Peter Chris. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to invite. I want to invite the um, any questions that you that you may have. Um, you have listened to us uh, close to uh, two hours. Um, uh, we are here to to answer your questions briefly. Um, I did say. Uh, I said earlier that the there is um, of course an icon just at the top of your page you'll see a q and a um and you can of course type your question in there or you can use the reaction one of course you, you you'll see that just at the top and um, you click on that and of course you can raise your hand and then i will invite you to um to of course relay your question to us I now invite you all. I see, I see, um, Mr. Paul, you have your hands up. Go right ahead, please. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Todd Dexter. And thank you, sir, our Chancellor, for the presentation also. Uh, I trust you can now see my face because uh, the um, PG and E have restored power here. I'm sorry about that uh, experience. I was on, my camera was on, just that you can't see me. You know, um, so that apology I have to say. Uh, so um, I just want to give a little perspective to what we've been doing as part of uh, our knowledge delivery in the faculty uh, in the School of Law. Uh, so besides the theory or substantive law, because you, basically university education, law, university education is what is substantive knowledge. What you learn in law school is basically what procedural law, right? So substantive law in the university basically and procedural law is what you would embark on when you go to law school, either in um, Jamaica or in, um, in um, Bahamas or or even in the Nigerian law school. You know, you do criminal and civil procedure, you do evidence and all that. So one other thing that we do here in, um, in Charisma that we just did... Um, not quite uh, not long ago is that we embark on mood sessions and during our mood sessions i'm telling you it's very very interesting it's not just about substantive law it's about the application of law right so you have this issue of iraq issues rules um analysis and other conclusion that you've been writing for us on the papers you now have the opportunity to make an oral presentation of a of a of a case you know so you will give you that that leverage you will tell us the issues you tell us the rules you will tell us why this is happening why this is not so you know practically so we try to emphasize on the part of um of practical delivery of knowledge besides that when we teach in classrooms some of us like to bring our experience to bear you know i remember talking to my students about my experiences in, in in areas of law that are diverse and they're very interesting to them, like in the Sharia courts, you know, customary courts experiences, types of cross examinations that are done at the superior courts, court of appeals, you know, uh, high court experiences. So all some of us have gone through that gamut of litigation. So when we are teaching evidence or criminal law, we try to explain some of those experiences we've had. You know, uh, if you are, for example, during cross-examination, I would like to tell my students, you don't ask a witness a question that you yourself, the lawyer, don't know the answer. Because you don't, you can take your balance. You get me? So I will tell them the experience of what I did in court and how I will ask a witness a close question. And there are times that I will ask a witness an open and their question, my witness in examination in chief, but when I'm in cross-examination, I would like to close you up. I want to put you on the yes or no. 
you know, so it goes that those are the experiences some of us have had in courtrooms, you know, uh, or how to tender evidence, what more to, you know, not just what you are being told in theories, how to do it. And I trust this semester we get to see more of this when we embark in the next semester, when we try to embark on our moot uh, trial sessions. And Dr. Todd has also a very wide gamut of experience, uh, you know, uh, you know, so that we also try to bring to bear when we teach things like um, uh, criminal law uh, and eventually evidence and so on. So thank you very much uh, for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Paul. Uh, you could tell how excited um, and exciting uh, Mr. Paul is in terms of law and um, being able to facilitate this program. I still invite you, please uh, use, use the reactions and just indicate by way of your hand. If you have any question that you wish um, for us to address, um, Yes, we have one. Um, okay, I'm seeing one. Elizabeth, um, you have your your hand up. Um, thank you. You are now invited to ask that question. Hello. Um, I really just want to say thank you for the presentation. This has been very helpful. Uh, my name is Elizabeth, and I'm based in the U.S. Uh, my question is uh, for people who might have like a healthcare background, and they're looking to get into the field of law how do you feel like your program prepares um people like us for kind of into into uh, interdisciplinary um practice right i, I i'm going to invite ordeen um to to answer that question who um all right thank you so much elizabeth for that uh question thank you so so much elizabeth for asking that question um, you will, people from any discipline will fit into the law program perfectly. For instance, one of our current students is not even in law at all. He, she just joined, which is Dr. Gayan. It's a new experience for her. You heard the chancellor said that she has to give up her work just to attend this program. So at the first year, we introduce you to the background they introduce you, we welcome you into law gradually. I thought we laid that foundation, every single thing you need to know about law. It is not, it will initially to seem probably like first few weeks, it will seem to be a little bit challenging to you, but you are going to blend into the program. It's really nothing so serious for you to worry about because people always move from different professions to law profession. So you can always blend it because the way we structure the program is just we take you from the lowest background and build you up to where you will be and learn the program. We don't jump into it. So you learn the basic knowledge of law, what is all about the legal or the language of the law, what the court does, who the judges are, everything. Then you progress to knowing the the constitution, the contract. It's just like the simple contract, just like what you do every day, your everyday life. So where is just learning the terms that fit perfectly into what you already know. That's the best I can describe it for you at the initial stage. So it's not going to be anything hard for you. You can, you're welcome to join the program and you are really going to fit into it and grow up into it. It's not going to be challenging. Don't worry about the physics and the chemistry, you know. It's just a lot of reading, reading, but I, uh, all I have to tell is that you have to read and read and read because it's a versatile area and you have to put all the knowledge later to be able to practice in that profession. And you can also think about in your master's to go into the area of health law, which will also include in our program soon, because if you want to combine two of them, then that will really help you. I have seen a lot of lawyers. I have a lot of friends actually in my LLM program, my dean, my dean for LLM program, She's an attorney and also a medical doctor. She was able to do these two things, combine them very well, and the nurses will tell you the experiences. I have some of my colleagues, my friends, who are my friends and my colleagues who are lawyers and nurses. So you will really, really fit into the program. So I encourage you to come and we give a personal touch, a personal communication. We just personalize every single thing we do with every student. We are always accessible, reach us. If you think you have very, you find the subject or whatever we thought, difficult, you have the opportunity to review the recording, you have the opportunity of coming to our office, 
just click into the, these teams. We are online, they're waiting for you, or you can send us an email, we'll reply as soon as we can. So we'll just help you walk through this journey of your legal profession. So you're welcome to join us. I promise it's not going to be anything hard. With charisma students, with charisma st students and faculty, especially as them that work as a team. They, you hear them, they'll work as a team because sometimes you need each other to study courses and understand it better. All right? So I don't think it's going to be a big deal to you. And let me use this opportunity also to add that we are resuming our next academic section for LLB on the 28th, Wednesday, and for LLM and Masters on the 27th. But if you're here in attendance for this, um, for this um, webinar, I am going to give you till the 7th. So you have enough time to turn in your application. I have enough time to come in. And I talked about this professional admission. So even if you don't have your official transcript right now, you can still get a role. Just complete your application, follow the application process, and they will give you a professional admission, which will give you extra eight weeks to submit your official documents. Because if you miss this one, you're going to wait for us till next academic session, which is going to start at the end of September. So I encourage you to enroll. I hope that answers your question, Elizabeth. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I, I do see, I recognize Dr. Peter Chris, Chancellor. I recognize your hand. You are welcome to uh, comment. Thank you so much, um, Professor Todd. Yeah, um, to add to what uh, Dean uh, School of Law had uh, said to Elizabeth. So, um, you know, my background is health sciences, of course, healthcare, and uh, I have, um, uh, you know, I took a lot of uh, healthcare, health law courses in my, you know, health science programs, and um, most of my professors in these courses are all attorneys. So what I'm trying to explain to you is this, um, you can, just as Dr. Chukuka had said, when you look at why people do what they do, they have reason. I have had a professor that obviously she has masters in history and PhD in public health. The first question we asked that professor was, how do you combine this? She gave us a very clear and reasonable answer. You know, her response was, the history helps me to understand the history of diseases in public health. That's easy, right? Now, in your healthcare profession, you must remember that we have a lot of healthcare laws, a lot of healthcare laws, okay? So the only trusted people that can help us to understand these laws are legal practitioners. So when you combine your health experience with your legal profession, you are on the safe side, um, on the safe hand, okay? So I think it's a good combination, by the way, healthcare and law, okay? Because you will need this, <laughs> definitely, you will need it, okay? So thank you for that kind of uh, question. At least everyone is listening that no matter what you are trying to do with that, um, you will find something to use with a law degree um, currently with what you are doing today, okay? So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chancellor. Thank you so much for the, that comment and that encouragement. Um, Ryan, I do recognize your hand up. You are invited to ask your question. Thank you very much, Mr. Tan. Um, I had two questions. Um, one was generally answered um, earlier. That question was, what knowledge does a person need to have before pursuing studies in law? Um, it was mentioned that um, everything or general things that you need to know will um, be taught to you. So my second question is, um, what level of um, education should a person generally have uh, before um, pursuing 
a degree in law. For example, myself, um, I have um, CSEC um, subjects, um, general diploma in computer studies, and um, a certificate in human relations. So um, what level, again, does a person generally need to be at academically to pursue a degree in law? Thank you so much, Ryan, for that for that question. Um, I'm going to invite two persons to respond. I'm going to invite our dean of the law, and of course, I'm going to um, invite our, our admissions um, uh, facilitator on our webinar today, um, who may, if there's anything to add to to um, admissions. All right. Thank you again, Ryan, for that question. Thank you so much, Ryan, for the question. Um, before I answer your question, Elizabeth, I, I saw your text message, and we will definitely leave our email address on the chat box. Um, Mr. Todd, could you please go ahead and type in the email address? My email address there, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth, if you're still around, please type in your email address on the chat box so that they can reach us easily, please. Okay, Ryan, to answer your question, it depends on the um, the type of degree you want to obtain from charisma or in a legal profession. We have the LLB, we have the LLM, and we have the PhD in law. Now, if you want to practice law and you're already in a different area like what you're doing right now, you have a choice to be a practicing attorney or just to get a degree, a master degree, in law, in legal studies, just that one does not allow you to practice, just like for you to have background and strengthen your knowledge in law. All right. So, having said that, if you want to pursue your LLB, all you need is your high school certificate. So, I'm con where are you from? Sorry, if you don't mind, Rian, where are you asking your question from? I'm from Guyana. Oh, Guyana. So I believe the Guyana, they have your certificates or the GED. So the the if you're are you interested in the LLB program? Because if once you've already completed your higher education and we have the certificate, you are qualified to start your LLB program. All right. If you're in a profession and you really don't want to practice law, but you want to have a knowledge of law, then you will want to do the Master of Arts in Legal studies that one does not guarantee you know it will, does not prepare you to practice for you to have broader knowledge of law so since you don't have a law pro a law background you can't go into masters in law because you must have an llb before you can take your um llm so my advice for you will be if you want to practice law you are qualified to start your llb if you just want to have a knowledge of law because you already have degrees already in different aspects of law, then you can think about the master of in legal studies. All right. So either way, you will fit into the program, whichever one you want to start. So my question to you will be, do you want to practice or do you just want to have the knowledge of law? I would like to practice. OK, so if you would like to practice, then you're very much welcome to join the LLB program. Just join the LLB because you're qualified. You, you've already told me what your credentials are, and that will end your that means you already you have your high school degree, so certificate. So that means you can start the LLB program. All right. I hope that answers your question. Is is there a, a, a number of, of um C sec um subjects needs to be covered or yes? No. Yes, so I believe you joined us late. I went through the whole subjects before. Um, you for LL for LLB have to take one hundred and eight credit units, and this program is offered for three years, and that three years you have three semesters per academic calendar year, and the three semesters contains sixteen weeks. So 
when you start your LLB, assuming you're starting your LLB, this section started in September, is considered the 22-23 section, and that will be your first year. So under that first year, so we run from September to September, and we have three semesters in each academic calendar year, and each semester is for 16 weeks. So, and for that 16 weeks, you are expected to take 12 credit classes, which is four classes, three law classes and one general class. At the end of the whole thing, you have a total of 108 credits you will take before we can give you that LLB program. At the end of it, you have what we call the essay-based project, which you're going to write and which we will turn in, they will give you the certificate. A few successful parts will give you the LLB certificate. And then what is obtainable in Ghana is that you will take the CLE exam and you will be zoned to Bahamas Law School for your law school. I encourage you to either you, you this video is going to be available to watch it again. You're going to see the whole presentation and the whole classes over there that I did. and. Um, let me see if I can open it up again. Give me one second. Let me see. Uh, Professor, I, I, I think what um I think to what um Ryan was um alluding to was the amount of CSEC. Um in the Caribbean the of CSEC. In the Caribbean, the um you know in the US and in, in, in other um, countries, they have their um, high school certificates. Um, in the Caribbean, especially in Guyana, um, the students leaving high school will leave with their CSEC or their, their, their CXC, which is their Caribbean proficiency examination. Sometimes they go higher to have their, their, their A levels or um, what is called CAPE, which is an advanced in the um, to the to the Caribbean proficiency examination, um, and I think he is saying he has um, his CSEC. Um, can I ask Ryan um, if you if you may want to liaise with the um, with the you you have the email addresses if you would want to liaise with admissions um, because what what will have to happen they will have to of course look at your your passes. In, um, in your um, CSEC exams, um, your grades, and to be able to see whether uh, those are equated enough with the um, certificates, which is acceptable by the school um, um, as high school diplomas. All right. It is Do also it is also listed in the Charisma email address um, website. Once you go into the website, I go into admissions. Just look for your country. Click on it. You will see the certificate is accepted for LLB for for degree programs there. Thank you so much. Does that help I, you I, help you, Ryan? Does that we help have you? Elizabeth here who will help to answer the question to Elizabeth from admission. So she's here. Yes. Yes. You, uh, I'll invite you, Elizabeth, to speak. Yes. Um, the students and um. I know that some students do come from the local high schools um, in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Um, from what I see, um, none of them have applied for the law degree, but um, they have been able to get through with high school transcripts. We do accept high school transcripts as well. As for um, CAXCs, if you would like to um, give those as well, we will accept them as well. There's no problem with that because we are, we are accredited with um, we all take CXCs basically in the Caribbean. So it's a general thing, even the people in the Turks and Caicos as well. So it is acceptable, but if you want as well, you can tie in your transcripts from your high school. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I hope it helps um, you, Ryan. Um, so I, I, if, if you have no other question, I'll invite you to um just click again on um on that same button that you press to get your hand up and it will lower your hand
I see another hand up yes. and I'm seeing one person by the name of Telford. Thank you. I invite you now to, um, of course, state your question. Telford Lane, Lane, I invite you to give your question. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I being heard? Good afternoon. afternoon. Yes, we can sure, hear yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I typed the question in the chat. Yes, we can so I was hear hoping, you. Yeah, I, I typed the question in the chat, so I was hoping to, to get a response without asking oh, uh, verbally. Um, I'm presently doing the PhD program with you guys, um, psychology, <clears throat> and I'm hoping that um, when the going gets lighter, that I would have um, accommodated um, the LLB program. I'm, I'm asking, um, is it is it licensed? Is it recognizable after doing that? Can I practice maybe anywhere in the Caribbean or further field? Um, you mean for you mean for PhD program? No, no, no. So so I'm doing the PhD program in psychology with you. Okay. And I'm hoping somewhere along the line that I mm -hmm. can accommodate uh, the LLB program. Oh, okay. The question is, uh, is is the LLB program um, licensed? Is it acceptable that after a while I can be I can practice in Guyana or further field? That, that's the question. OK, well, 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 we, would, we, would want to change, we would want to change the words around a little bit. All right. So the LLB is not licensed. OK, so it's not a license for you to practice. On completion of your, your bachelor's of law, you will still need to go to law school. And the three law schools which are available in the Caribbean under the, the Council of Legal, Legal Education would be, of course, as I said, you would in law school in Trinidad, uh, Norman Manley in, in Jamaica, and of course, Eugene de Pook in the Bahamas. All right. So the, the requirements would have to be um, you will have to apply to the law school after you attain your law degree. All right. And you'll need to sit an, an entry exam and providing that you pass that exam, the law school will, of course, will um, accept you in. Then you'll have to do two years of studies at the law school. And on completion of that two years of studies, you write your exams at the law school, and then you're given your certificate, which is your license to be able to be admitted to practice. All right. So I hope that helps you. Um, so your LLB is your is your training in substantive law, and of course your training in relation to a law school for your license continues at the law school. So in total. A person to become qualified as a lawyer needs to, that person will need to study for five years. So it is three years at Charisma Law, at Charisma School, um, doing your LLB and two years at the law school. Um, and then you will, of course, on completion of that, you will um, be admitted to practice as an attorney, Mr. Lane. Thank you. Does that help you? Very much. Thank you so much. Professor Dexter, I think the word that would be, would be appropriate for, for uh, text one, the, uh, the last person that I asked, is that our uh, program here at Charisma is accredited and recognized by the law school so that, that completing this program, you are eligible to be admitted or to sit for the exams that will admit you into the law school. So the LLB is not a licensed program, but our university is accredited and recognized amongst the university that would, uh, students that will sit for the exams to the law school. So I think there are two different things about licensing and accreditation. That we have covered, and there's no problem about that. Thank you so much, Paul. That even clears it up more. Um, is I there hope, any uh, other Telford, I hope this answers your yes. question. Do you have any other question? Sorry, yeah, that, that is fine. I, I will email in terms of the duration of the three years if there is any exemption um, based on uh, the, the level I'm coming at. Um, but I'll give others the opportunity. OK, okay so, thank you. Um, we have one question, um, and this question is, um, of course, respected Dean and, on, and an honorable team. 
um, that question wants to that person wants to know is um, is the Charisma University's certificate approved in Middle East? So of course I'm going to invite two persons to to speak to us and and, and answer that quest in answering that question. I'm going to invite our chancellor and I'm going to invite our dean of the law school and I'm sure you'll you'll get the answer for that question. All right. Chancellor, I, I, I welcome you. To yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, okay. So thank you so much for that question. Okay. Um, technically speaking, um, Charisma University accreditation uh, is recognized worldwide. Okay. Charisma University is also recognized by Amidist. So Amidist is an umbrella of uh, so it's an organization that recognizes accrediting bodies in the Middle East. And this body is the controlling body that recognizes foreign universities outside the Middle East. So Charisma University is recognized by the Middle East, right? So that obviously uh, addresses your question whether we are recognized in Middle East, the answer is yes, because we are recognized by our Middle East. Okay? I hope that, and from my side, I hope I, you know, I was able to answer your question, okay? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Peter Chris, our Chancellor, for that, for that response. Um, let me see if there's any other. OK, so that question was answered and the person uh, um, expressed. Thank you. Um, is there any other person with any other question? All right, I, I am sure I'm sure um, being with us for for um, just a bit over two hours. Um, uh, OK, we have Miss Cameron. You have OK, you have the last question then. Go ahead, please. Yes, Professor Todd, I'd place it in the Q&A. Um, the question poses is that what is the duration um, for persons who possess a LLM when they apply to the law school for their studies? Your, Can you repeat sorry, that question? Your question is in, in the chat. What is the timeline for individuals with an LLM who applies to the law school for obtaining the LLEC? All right. I want to say to you that the LLM um, still it is it is still is not the um, the what you call the certificate which allows you to um, to say well okay I can shorten the process um, of the duration of studies at the LEC. Now the rule is and if you and if I invite you to to check to go under the Council of Legal Education and you will find that in order for you to get the internship get on the internship program um, which is six months you must be an attorney who is admitted, who is already admitted at a it at a, in another jurisdiction. So let's say you're coming out of the United States or you're coming out of England, um, the UK, and you want to practice in the Caribbean. You know, you're already a member of the bar there. Now, in order for you to be oriented into um, the uh, the laws as it pertains to the Caribbean, the law schools afford you an opportunity to have a six months internship um, with the law school. So instead of spending um, two years, um, you will spend just six months. All right. So an LLM doesn't mean that you are a qualified attorney at one of the bars in the country. All right. So even if you have an LLM, 
and you had not been called to uh, the bars in one of the jurisdictions, then you will still have to do your two years um, of studies in order to qualify you as an attorney. All right. Um, but of course, the, with the LLM, if you if you are not under the one of the listed schools um, for automatic um, admissions, and I want to clear that up, automatic admissions is an agreement between the heads of states of of in the Caribbean. So they have agreed, I will take 25 or I will take 30 students from the university automatically. All right. Our checks, uh, uh, that is that uh, Turks and Caicos as an overseas territory is not on the list to have automatic entry. So we will have to come under the second uh, provision. The second provision is for the students to sit at their, their exam and to be admitted. All right, I hope that helps you, uh, Ms. Cameron. Um, of course, thank you uh, participants again. I want to invite um, our Dean once more to give uh, closing remarks um, at this at this time and um, of course and express our sincere gratitude to one and all. Doc, I, I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you so much everyone for coming. My special thanks to the faculty members, our SMT, the Chancellor, Dr. Peter Christ, our president, my faculty members, my students, and for people that attended. I hope you have enjoyed and learned so much about this Charisma Law degree programs. I will encourage each and every one of you who wants to join to join as soon as possible. Remember that the LLB's next academic session is on Wednesday, starting on Wednesday, September 28, 2022. And for LLM and PhD, they start on the 27th. And as I said before, if you're here today, we'll extend your resumption date for the LLB program all the way to the 7th. That will give you enough time to apply. So I would advise you to start the administration process immediately, and at least you will be given a provisional admission if you don't have all your credentials ready. And if you have any other question or any further clarification, please feel free to email me or the admissions. I already have my email on the chat list. And I look forward to you people joining our program. And thank you again for listening to us. Uh, we are ready to welcome you into Charisma University School of Law. I'm sure you'll be fulfilled in the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Todd, for conducting this as our MC. Thank you. And thank, thank you all for patiently listening to pleasure, us. And I did enjoy every thank moment. You. Thank you all. Thank you all. And do have a wonderful weekend. Uh, we are officially closed from this webinar. Thank yes, you and bye. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your weekend. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Good to see you, Ms. Cameron. Take care. All right. Likewise, what's up?